Good morning. Welcome to our worshiping here today as we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Our order of worship this morning is Divine Service Setting 1. That's on page 151 in the front of your hymnal. Please note that our sermon hymn and the distribution hymn during communion are printed on a separate page that hopefully you received as you entered the church. I've been asked to announce that the adult Bible class is meeting today in the old basement, down in the old basement. Women's Bible study will meet tomorrow at 1.30 in the afternoon, also on Monday from 10 in the morning until 7 p.m., then again on Tuesday from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m., the LWML has its workshop. Monday evening at 7, the Evening Guild has its regular monthly meeting. The sewing group invites you to join them Tuesday afternoons, 1.45 until 6 o'clock. On Wednesday, we have Bible breakfast study at RBJ's. The study starts at 7 o'clock in the morning. And then Wednesday evening, we have our summer midweek worship service, 7 p.m. Please note the uh, blue insert in your bulletin with instructions on how to register online for church directory pictures. You can also call the church office and make an appointment that way. Two weeks from today, the 19th of June, uh, Jordan DeBoer will be preaching, and uh, we are having a potluck after the late service that day. So uh, if you would like to join us for uh, either the 8 or the 11 o'clock service, and then the potluck at noon, two weeks from today. In our prayers this morning, we continue to pray for Carson Grohn, Joan Drevlo and the family and friends of Kurt Hoppe. We remember those who are dealing with cancer, and we pray for our day school as it begins its summer recess. Our opening hymn today is number 497, Come Holy Ghost, God and Lord, 497.
We stand for the liturgy on page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. <coughs> Almighty God in his mercy has given a son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The intro for the day is printed on your bulletin insert. We read responsibly by half verses. Come Holy Spirit, Fill the hearts of the faithful. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom have you made them all. These all look to you. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day, by the same Spirit, to have a right understanding in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they settled there. <coughs> and they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men had made. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing they propose to do will be impossible now for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Be to Our second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them, and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. They were amazed and astonished and said, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? So how is it then that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we all hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. <coughs> but Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, saying, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. In the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and he will bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I've told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Our sermon hymn is on the uh, sheet that you received as you came in. It's Come Holy Ghost in Love. Come Holy Ghost in Love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The text for our sermon this morning is our gospel reading from John chapter 14. Please be seated. Today is Pentecost, 
50 days after Easter and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus, 53 days after his crucifixion and death, 10 days after his ascension into heaven. So much has happened in such a short period of time, really. Too much, in fact. All of it has those steadfast first few believers bewildered. They don't quite understand what all this means. And now that Jesus has ascended back into heaven, they feel even more confused and lost. But Jesus had promised them the Holy Spirit, as we heard in our text today. The Holy Spirit who comes to them at Pentecost with the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Remember, the Hebrew word for spirit is the same as the word for wind. The Holy Spirit who was in, with, and on them as the tongues of fire indicate, enabling them to speak in various known languages and tongues to the assembled crowd about Jesus and the gospel. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father has sent in the name of the Son, in fulfillment of Christ's promise. And that Spirit comes to gather them, to enlighten them, to guide them, to fill them, to keep them. Doesn't that sound familiar? Haven't we all heard something similar to that before? Maybe we even had to memorize it. Listen again to these words. I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Ghost has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. Even as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In which Christian church he daily and richly forgives all sins to me and all believers, and will at the last day raise up me and all the dead, and give unto me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. I love that great explanation of the third article of the Creed, the work of sanctification by the Holy Spirit that we all memorized from Luther's small catechism. That explanation is sheer genius. In very simple terms, Luther cuts through all of it. He focuses us on the one thing that's needful, Jesus Christ, our Savior. That is, everything the Holy Spirit does, he does to point us to Christ and our salvation. On this Pentecost day, when we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit to the gathered believers in Jerusalem, the question naturally comes up as to what exactly do we Lutherans believe about the Holy Spirit? That is, does the Spirit come to us today? Does the Spirit give us gifts as he did that day in Jerusalem? If so, what are those gifts? The answer to all those questions is found in those words from the Catechism. So, let's take a slow walk through them again today. We start off that explanation of the third article by confessing our sin and its consequence. We say that we are spiritually dead. Not just weakened and impaired, not just hesitant and faltering, but completely unable to do even the slightest for our salvation. We can't come to God on our own. We can't believe in Jesus on our own. We can't even want to do so. Because we're literally dead in spiritual terms. And who except God can raise the dead? But thankfully he does just that. The Holy Spirit comes to us to give us life again, spiritual and eternal life. And he does that, we say, through the gospel. The gospel. The good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. Jesus has lived for us, keeping the law's demands. Jesus has died for us, suffering the hell for all sin. Jesus has risen for us, opening heaven and showing that we do have eternal life in him. Jesus has ascended for us, ruling heaven and earth for our welfare and blazing our trail there. That gospel is good news. The good news that in Christ, everything, everything has been done for us by God himself. And so we know that it's done and done right. In the same way, the Holy Spirit, God, makes all of this yours. He does that by applying that gospel to you by name in baptism. There, you were washed clean, called by name, adopted and given God's name as your very own, united and joined to Christ. In baptism, everything that is his has been made yours. What a treasure baptism is indeed. And it's the Holy Spirit who does all of that. In the word, whether that be the written word of the Bible, 
or the spoken word of preaching and teaching, or the visual word of artworks like paintings and pictures, statues and crucifixes, stained glass windows and the like, or the words sung in hymns and songs. In all these ways, the word brings home to you the very same gospel. And so we Lutherans rejoice and thank God for all of them. What a rich, vast, wonderful treasure trove we have in the word. And the absolution, when the pastor stands and speaks in Christ's place on his authority and power, in the absolution, the gospel is yours too. How wonderful it is to hear that precious word of forgiveness and life spoken to you by another sinner, but with all of God's might, authority, and certainty behind it. When told you're forgiven, you know that it's true because it's God who says so. And in the Lord's Supper, we have the purest, sweetest gospel. For there are given into your own hand and mouth are the very body and blood which purchased your forgiveness. You take and you eat, but it's God who works the miracle of that sacrament. Truly, the Lord's Supper is a tiny bit of heaven. It's a foretaste of the feast to come, the wedding banquet of the Lamb and his bride, the church, given to you here and now. So, how can we walk away from the communion rail without knowing the joy and peace which passes all understanding? These, then, are the means of grace which the Holy Spirit uses to call, gather, enlighten, and sanctify us as Christians. Because these are the means which bring Christ to us. And that pointing us and bringing us to Christ, that's the true work of the Holy Spirit. Now, that's the first half of the explanation from the Catechism. It focuses on what the Holy Spirit does for me. That is, it's very individualistic. But the second half of the explanation is equally important. And it speaks as to what the Holy Spirit does for and through the whole Christian church. You see, while the gospel is for you, it's also for everyone. And the Spirit brings that gospel not just to you, but to them as well. And so we joyfully confess that just as the Holy Spirit has called, gathered, enlightened, sanctified, and kept us in the true faith, so he does for every Christian. What a delight it is to say that. God loves me and you with an infinite love. But he has the very same love for every single person. No one is excluded. No one is too wicked, too unimportant, too useless, too anything for God. Jesus lived, died, rose, and ascended for them too. Now think about what that means. Think of the most unlovable, the most horrible, the most evil, the most insignificant person imaginable. Maybe it's Adolf Hitler or Judas Iscariot. Perhaps it's the bully of your school days or your boss, whomever. Jesus did it all for that person too. And God wants him or her to receive his love just as God wanted you. Now, <clears throat> if God so loved that person, if God endured hell for that person, then how can we not love him or her? And so the Holy Spirit reaches out even to them, and he does so using you. You. You are to be his agent, his mouthpiece, his messenger. God has put you where you are, surrounded by the people in your life, so that you can speak for him by your words and your actions. And so as you live your life as a Christian, the Holy Spirit works through you. Your words echo his, pointing to Christ. Your actions imitate his, showing forth Christ's sacrificial love. What a blessing and a privilege it is to be involved in God's own work. So often, though, we're afraid, aren't we? <coughs> we wonder, <clears throat> what will I say? How can I present that gospel without sounding like I have all the answers or that I think I'm better than other people? What if they reject the message or me? But remember what this explanation teaches us. It's the Holy Spirit who does the work, not us. He provides the opportunities. He gives the words. And above all, it's he, not you, not me, not the person to whom we are speaking. He causes the faith to germinate and grow. So, our Lutheran understanding of the Holy Spirit and his work gives us confidence and peace in our outreach and witnessing, too. It's the work of the Holy Spirit to bring you and me into the church. And he uses us to bring others into that same church. But why? Why? Because, as the Catechism says, it's in the church that he daily and richly forgives all sins to me and all believers. The church is where the gospel is. 
And where there is the gospel, there is forgiveness of sins. And where there is the forgiveness of sins, there is the promise of eternal life. All too often, though, it seems that people, once they're in the church, forget why they need to be there. Instead of seeing it as a refuge or oasis of life in this world's desert of sin, death, and the devil, they see it in a more optional way. And so they ask things like, how often do I have to go to church? Rather than recognizing our need to be here. After all, we sin much. We sin daily, in fact. We sin even after the Spirit has called and gathered us into the church. And so we need to daily remember our baptism. We need to daily hear our Father's word and speak back to him in our prayers. We need to receive his forgiveness frequently in the absolution and the Lord's Supper. We need it. And it's here that you will find it. For as we confess, here the Holy Spirit richly and daily forgives me all of my sins and the sins of all other Christians. Those first Christians in Jerusalem were unsettled and confused even after they had heard and seen the risen Jesus. But once the promised helper, the Holy Spirit, came on Pentecost, everything fell into place. He called and gathered. He enlightened and sanctified them. He kept and used them to bring the good news of Jesus to all the world. Well, if those great men and women of God struggled, then it shouldn't surprise us that we too have our worries, fears, and doubts. But the answer God gave to them then it's the same answer he gives to us today. He sends his Holy Spirit. His Spirit who calls and gathers, enlightens and sanctifies, keeps and uses you just as he did them. And it's here that you find that Spirit. Here in the Word and sacraments. Here he will descend upon you and fill you. Here he will give you peace. Here he will direct and guide you so that you might be his agents in bringing that saving good news to others to bring them too into his church, that they too might richly and daily have their sins forgiven and enjoy that foretaste of heaven that we know. In our text, Jesus said to his disciples, including us, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and he'll remind you of everything that I've said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, do not be afraid. So don't be afraid. For the Helper has come, and he's with you now and always. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, 
We offer before you our prayers for the well-being of your church here and throughout the world. Guide and govern it by your Holy Spirit, so that all profess themselves to be Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Send down upon all Christian pastors and congregations the healthful spirit of your grace, that they might please you in all things. Father, this world is a dangerous, fallen place filled with the effects of sin. Be with all those suffering from bloodshed and violence, and we pray you grant reconciliation and peace. Behold and mercy all those in authority over us, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of our state, as well as our local leaders. Supply them with your blessing <coughs> that they may be inclined to do your will and walk according to your commandments. Be with our nation's first responders and military, especially Jonathan Olson, that they may be kept safe as they labor to keep us safe in this fallen world. We humbly ask your abiding presence in every situation that you'd make known your saving ways among us. Today we also pray for our day school students and families, teachers and staff, that they might be refreshed as they begin their summer recess. Lord God, preserve those who travel, satisfy the wants of your creatures, and help those who call upon you in any need, <coughs> that they may have patience in the midst of suffering, and according to your holy will, be released from their afflictions and troubles. We here remember especially Carson Grohn, Joan Drevlo, the family and friends of Kurt Hoppe, as well as all those who are suffering from cancer. <coughs> Dear Father, we also pray that you would comfort the depressed, satisfy the hungry and unemployed, and protect the weak. All this we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated for the offering. We stand for the offertory on page 159.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand, poured out this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. For all this the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs>
We stand for the postman and canticle. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into our flesh, we thank you that for his sake you've given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn, 768. To God the Holy Spirit, let us pray. <laughs>